So in t artificial intelligence is really an ill-defined term because it's not really clear what, in general, what we mean by intelligence. Uh, so what I focus on here is machine learning uh, because learning really is a, a well-defined term. But actually, most of the things that you think of, of as artificial intelligence, you know, voice recognition, picture classification, things like that, are actually machine learning. Uh, and so what machine learning is, is basically algorithms that learn how uh, an output, which we're going to refer to as Y, depends on the input, which we're going to refer to as X. And so the, the, the whole thing can really be summarized in, in this equation here. Right? So we need to find this function F that gives us uh, an output given an input. And so the simplest function uh, that you can think of, the simplest uh, form of f, is, is this equation here, where uh, y just depends on x uh, multiplied by a constant, and then you have uh, an intercept here, v. So that is known as a linear regression. So like every other field, um, machine learning has its own set of, of terms. So uh, what you normally think of here is linear reg regression with uh, m uh, as a slope and v as an intercept. Uh, in machine learning lingo, uh, here we, you usually um, write the equation a little bit backwards so that the intercept, which we call the bias, uh, comes first, and then uh, the slope, which we call, call the weight, uh, comes second. Uh, also, we use the term y here uh, for the actual data points, and then the y values we get from this equation is then y predicted. Okay, uh, let's actually uh, stop talking about the, the theory and actually do some coding. So I'm going to go over here. Uh, I'm in my Google Drive. I've made a, a blank folder. And uh, I now want to quote, code up linear regression using Python and Google Collaboratory, which you can find here. If you uh, don't see this option uh, in your Google Drive, you need to add it here uh, by searching for Colab and then installing it. Now, I already installed it, so you see I, I get a green check mark. Otherwise, you have to click this button here um, to install it. So let's fire it up. OK, and so here we are. Uh, the first thing I want to do is rename the file so I know what's, what's in the file. And I'm going to call it linear regression. OK, uh, then we're going to start uh, with some data. Now, that's going to take a little bit of typing in this case. Uh, so I'm uh, just going to copy it and paste it in here. So here are my x and y values. Right? So here is my first set of x and y, y values. Here's the second set and so forth. So I have x here and y here. OK, so the first thing we're going to do is, is we're going to try to plot it. Uh, and so in order to plot it, I need separate lists of x and y, uh, as you'll see. So to plot it, I'm going to use something, a, a library called map plotlib, and I'm going to use a sublibrary here called pyplot, and I'm going to rename that as plt because I don't want to I don't want to type it all the time. Uh, so I'm going to put that in a cell by itself. Here is my other cell, and what I the point I eventually want to get to is that I want to type a plot, I want to scatter plot, and I want to plot my x and my y. That's how uh, matplotlib wants it. So uh, the next thing then is how do I get, how do I separate 
my x values and my y values from this data set. And so uh, anytime uh, we have to do with data in Python, usually the best thing is to use uh, another library called pandas. So I'm going to import pandas and I'm going to abbreviate it as pd. Okay, so let me run this cell. So, so far I've just uh, typed things. Now in order for this to take effect, I need to run it. You can do that either by clicking this button here and it's starting up and I didn't get any error messages, so that's good. Uh, another way to run it again is to hit command enter, which, is, which I'm going to use from now on. Okay, so let me uh, get this uh, x and y into a pandas data frame, which is the way pandas thinks about data. So I'm going to call my data frame pandas. I'm going to use the pandas library, which I abbreviated as pd, and I want to make a data frame. And I want to make it. I want to make it from my x and y list here, and I want to separate it into columns. The first column is going to be called x, and the second column is going to be called y. Okay. So in Oops, I don't want that here and go out here and hit return. Okay, so in, in uh, Google Colab, uh, if you want to, um, you can either print something out, as I'll show you later, or you can just type it uh, as the last line in a cell. So if I just type data here, I should be able to see what this data frame looks like. Okay, and so here you can see I now have a table. Uh, the leftmost thing here, that's just an index. Uh, and Python uh, and pandas and everything in Python usually count from zero. So this is my zeroth entry, and I have 10, so this is my ninth entry. And I have the x coordinate here in this column and the y coordinate here in this column. Okay. So that looks, that looks pretty good. Okay, so now all I need to do now here to get my x and y from my data frame is to type, uh, to tell it I want to use my column labeled x here for x and my column labeled y here for y. Okay, let's see how that works. Okay, I got an error. And, oh, yes, so I can, it has no attribute scatter plot. So if you look that up, that's, if you looked at the matplotlib library, that's exactly true. It's actually called scatter. Okay, and so here are the, here are the points. So here are my y values. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to try to make a model that predicts this. I want to make a machine learning, a linear regression model. So I want some y predicted. Right, and I'm going to write this in terms of a bias and a weight times x. Now, so I actually have to define what that is, and I don't really know, but I'm going to start with just, um, let's try to set it to both of them to 1. Okay, so this is a guess at my parameters in my machine learning model. Uh, okay, so let's um, Let's try to plot this line also. Right, so I want to plot, 
my y predicted against my x values. And now, now I want to plot it as a line, so I use plot here instead of scatter. Um, okay, well, it doesn't look it doesn't look too bad, but I probably could do a little bit better. Um, maybe my slope needs to be a little higher. Okay, that seems a little bit better. Maybe my maybe my intercept should be a little smaller. Whoops, I probably should give that a value. Uh, oops, sorry. Uh, I was messing that up. So I want my slope a little larger and maybe my intercept a little smaller. Ah, okay. So, okay, that looks a little bit better. Now, it would be nice to have some kind of uh, measure of whether I'm doing better or worse, right? Because right now I'm, I'm just sort of eyeballing it. So it would be good to sort of calculate, um, calculate an error. So what should that be? Well, the error uh, really sh should be the difference between the actual points, my data points, and the ones I predicted. Like this. So let me try to print that. and see how I'm doing here. Ah, okay, so that gives me an error for each point. Uh, that's, that's better, but that's not really what I want. I probably want, um, probably want the average of this instead. Okay, so to compute an average, I need another library called NumPy. So I'm gonna go up here and import NumPy as NP. I'm going to um, abbreviate it as NP and I'm going to run it so that it's loaded. And um, now I want to use the mean function in NumPy. And now I should just get an, an average of all these values. Yeah, okay, good. So, so that's, that looks pretty small. Let's, let's try to see what happens if I change the intercept. Does it get better or worse? Okay, that got worse, right? You can see, you can kind of see it here too, but you can, you can definitely uh, see it on the value. So let's try. Okay, so that's good. Uh, let me try, maybe I should make it even bigger here. Uh, no, that got, that got worse. Uh, so the error actually got smaller, right? But it's a, it's a smaller negative value. What I actually want is, is an error that's close to zero. Uh, and so actually what, what a lot of people do to avoid confusion, right? Because this is smaller uh, than than this, but it's actually worse. Um, so it's better to talk about either the, the absolute error or what, what a lot of people uh, do is talk about the error squared. So let's, um, let's square this. So in Python, uh, we do that with two stars. And okay, so now I have uh, a value here. Of course, it's larger because I square it. Uh, notice that it's the, the average of the error squared, right? So it's not the 0.25 squared, it's the average. So it's not the uh, square, it's not the average error squared, it's the average of the error squared. But either way, it's just a number, and the question is whether it now gets, gets bigger or larger bigger or smaller when I go to two, for example. Okay, got, got a lot bigger. Okay, so bigger mean squared error, uh, worse, worse plot, right? Uh, mean squared error is kind of a, 
that's kind of a mouthful. So in general, um, in machine learning, uh, the thing we're trying to make as small as possible, you usually call the loss function um, or the cost function. Now, there are many kinds of, of, of uh, loss or cost functions. Uh, if you go with the average of the error squared, then that's usually referred to as L2, right? So L for loss and two for squared. So actually let's define that. Let's move that up here. So that I know what it is. And actually what, what people do in many cases is multiply this um, by a half. Now I'll show you later why that is. Uh, it doesn't really matter uh, with the constant, right? So let's print my L2. Excellent. Okay. Now um, before we go on, why don't you uh, why don't we stop here and you get and, and why don't you code this up and try to play around with these two parameters and see how low uh, you can get the error.